Did you know that there's never been a communist country? China's not communist, North Korea's not communist, and the USSR wasn't communist. The reason is that communism was a goal that these countries aspired to but never achieved. So what is communism, and for that matter, what is socialism? Well, first of all, it's easier to understand communism and socialism as reactions to failed and exploitative forms of government like a monarchy or dictatorship or late-stage capitalism. They're focused on providing solutions to end worker exploitation and the economic class structure that causes it. And that kind of exploitation is so common around the world that there's like 30 different forms of communism and socialism. Here's a list. Leninism, Stalinism, Trotskyism, Maoism, Dengism, Pachandapath, Hoxhaism, Titoism, Luxembourgism, De Leonism, Anarcho-Communism, and more. All of them stem from Marxism as envisioned by Karl Marx, who is an economist and philosopher who wrote the Communist Manifesto. His big idea was that as Europe started to replace their monarchies with quasi-democratic capitalist economies, the people who got to own the farms and factories were no less exploitative than the kings and queens they replaced. Specifically, labor owners were collecting all the profits that their workers were creating, thereby forming two economic classes. Owners called the bourgeoisie and workers called the proletariat. Marx's idea was simple, just have the proletariat collectively own the means of production and cut out the bourgeoisie because what are they even doing anyway? So according to Marx, the way to gradually convert from capitalism to communism was with a bridge called socialism. In socialism, before the workers had direct control over the means of production, the means of production would be controlled by a democratic government, which itself is controlled by the workers, as opposed to private ownership, which is the case in capitalism. The point being that capitalism encourages competition, which encourages exploitation. So to remove that competitive edge, socialism would have workers collectively working for the greater good and equally sharing in that greater good. Think of things like universal health care, public schools. Everybody contributes and everybody benefits. Not just by personally using those services, but by a healthier and more educated society that you get to live in. And truly, in a nutshell, that's socialism. Now, when socialism can be established and private ownership can be abolished, the next step is total collective ownership and not just of production, but of all aspects of the economy and society. With the end goal of a classless, moneyless, and stateless society where everyone works towards the same goal of being happy, healthy, and free. You do what you can to contribute and you take only what you need. No billionaires, but no one's dying of starvation. Now, you might be thinking that sounds great, but why hasn't it ever worked out? And I'm gonna explain why we've never had a communist country and the fatal flaw with socialism. In fact, what we've seen over the last century is that power hungry sociopaths are very good at convincing people who would benefit the most from socialism that they can individually solve their problems instead, or in other words, fascism. And what almost always happens is that the more power a government is able to control in an effort to achieve socialism, the more likely it is that power hungry corrupt officials who are part of the owner class are able to get into office by lying and cheating, and they get their friends into positions of power, and now you don't have a socialist government. But instead, you have a cacistocracy, which is a government that's run by the worst, least qualified, and most unscrupulous citizens. Case in point, the Soviet Union, Venezuela, and North Korea. And it's important to understand that these countries are no longer socialist or communist, but they're failed states and cacistocracies. But if you look at countries that implement social policies, including the United States, but more easily seen in countries like Sweden and Canada, it's very clear to see that these policies are successful, beneficial to the population, and smaller scale examples of socialism that succeeds in spite of the corrupt owner class. So the real problem with socialism is power-hungry capitalist corruption. Also, America invades every single country that's ever tried.